Today, I'm going to teach you the difference between annealed, tempered, and chemically strengthened glass, also known as Gorilla Glass. I'm going to go into detail about each one and how it impacts the optical properties of glass, specifically first surface mirrors, beam splitter mirrors, and anti-reflective glass. Hi, I'm Sydney with Optical Mirror. Every week we bring our subscribers new lessons based off of our expertise in optical glass and mirrors. If you'd like to learn more about our products, you can find a lot more information on our website, opticalmirror.com. Let's get started. Glass is used all around us in our everyday lives. Our cups, light bulbs, car windows, phone screens, and even skyscrapers are composed of glass, but is it all the same? Glass is produced and treated in many different ways depending on what it's going to be used for. Let's start by talking about annealed glass, also known as standard or float glass. The term annealed is generally referring to the cooling process of the glass. Once limestone, soda ash, and several other things are melted at 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, the liquid mixture is floated on a pool of molten tin. This is where the term float glass comes from. After this process, the glass is slowly cooled and stretched, which helps reduce internal stress that could cause breakage. When glass is annealed properly, it's less prone to shattering or breaking. This being said though, annealed glass is thin and flexible enough that it can be cut, drilled, polished, or whatever else you may need to do with it without it breaking. If and when annealed glass does break, it can shatter into long, sharp pieces, which is why annealed glass isn't known as safety glass. I'll go over the benefits of tempering and laminating glass to improve safety. When it comes to optical mirrors, both glass first surface mirrors and dielectric beam splitter mirrors are typically supplied as annealed. They score and break just like standard glass and no further safety is needed. Additionally, annealed glass is extremely flat, which makes it ideal for making mirrors without distortion. Next, we have tempered glass. Tempered glass is most commonly used in car windows, shower doors, screen protectors for your smartphone, and is even a component in bulletproof glass. It is also known as safety glass. Tempered glass starts off as annealed glass. Before you put the glass into the furnace to be tempered, you need to cut down the glass to the exact size you need. Then it is put into a tempering furnace. At the end of the process, it is blasted with cool air and a process called quenching. This causes the outer layer to cool quicker than the inner layer, which causes tension within the glass, making it 10 times stronger. Because of the tension within tempered glass, it cannot be cut or drilled without shattering it entirely. That is why you need to cut it to the size you need before tempering it. Generally speaking, first surface mirrors are never supplied as tempered. This is because you need to apply the mirror coating before tempering, and then once it is tempered, it can cause distortion, which defeats the purpose of being an optically flat mirror. That brings us to the main downside of tempered mirrors, is the fact that the heating and cooling process can distort the reflection in the coating. That's not an issue for anti-reflective glass, but can be more noticeable in glass with a higher reflection, such as beam splitter glass. It's common for us to supply tempered anti-reflective glass and beam splitter mirrors for applications where the optical properties are not as crucial as the safety factor. Anti-reflective glass is commonly used in science and engineering, museums, storefronts, display cases, architecture, and luxury homes. Tempered beam splitter mirrors are used for digital signage mirrored displays, Pepper's Ghost Theater productions, and for mirror illusions in public spaces. Last but certainly not least, we have chemically strengthened glass. If tempered glass is already the stronger glass, then what is chemically strengthened glass? Chemically strengthened glass is most commonly used for the screen of smartphones, photocopiers, and pharmaceutical devices. Certain car manufacturers are looking into starting to use it for windshields as well. Chemically strengthened glass also starts off as standard glass, and then it undergoes a special molten salt bath. This process makes it eight times stronger than your standard glass. This molten salt bath typically consists of potassium nitrate at 450 degrees Celsius. This causes potassium ions to replace the sodium ions in the glass. Potassium ions are larger than sodium ions, so when they squeeze into the gaps in the glass, it makes it stronger. Pretty cool, right? Because the potassium ions are filling in the gaps, the glass is less likely to break. And the best part is, this process doesn't warp or distort the glass like tempered glass, so the reflection will still be crystal clear. That is why chemically strengthened glass first surface mirrors can be ideal for various applications. It preserves the optical qualities to provide an extremely accurate reflection while being stronger so the glass is way less likely to break. This is most commonly seen in systems with moving parts. Cutting glass after this process is possible, but it'll weaken the glass around the area where the cut was made. Chemical strengthening can also be done on thinner glass, where tempered glass needs a thicker cut due to the internal stress being put on the glass. When you temper a three millimeter thick mirror, it is super warped and still breaks quite easily. 
Depending on the shape, it can also be bendy, which is so weird to me. That is why we typically do not supply tempered mirrors at three millimeter thickness or thinner. While all glass has essentially the same starting process, there's many different treatments it can undergo depending on how it's going to be used. Hopefully this video could clear up some questions you may have had, and if it didn't, drop a comment below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can tune in next week for more educational videos. Until next time, I'm Sydney and I'll see you guys in my next video.